everybody, I'm Steph, and today I have the Eschen Spiel preview for you. Um, every big convention, I like to go down the, the list of new games that are being released. Uh, I have it prioritized with like the hottest new games uh, that I am most interested in. And then um, I actually will have a second video with all the other games that I'm also very interested in, but they didn't quite make the must-have list. They're my interested in list. So I'm going to have a very busy BGG Con this November because I have a, about 200 games that I want to play, uh, which I narrowed down from 300, okay? So I, I was like, I need to narrow down a little bit more. I had it at 300. I reorganized my priorities, and I'm brought it down to about 200. So I'm very excited to show you all the games coming at uh, SN Spiel this year, 2024. So let's take a look at what they are here. See if I got it all set up right. Boom. <laughs> oh my goodness, we are getting raided. Thank you, Froggy, for that raid. Welcome in. We are just starting our my preview list for Spiel 2023. Uh, and I think I might have said the wrong year a second ago, but we're talking about 2023 previews for Essence Spiel. Uh, and uh, these are my must-have games. If I were going to, to, to Essen right now, if I was packing my bags and heading out, these are the games that I would most want to get. A lot of them I've played already, so it's as if I haven't played them, what would be my most anticipated games? Uh, and I'll tell you the, the real story behind a lot of these once I get to them on the list. So Froggy says, we are lucky living near Essen. Oh my goodness, that is so lucky. That's amazing. You're going to have a wonderful time. I assume you're going if you live near there. Uh, so yes. Um, Let's just jump right in and start off. I, I have ordered these by the hotness, meaning it has the most thumbs. So I sorted it by hot, meaning these are the most anticipated games by the general community of BGG. They are also on my list. So going down my must-have list based on the hotness that they have and the thumbs that they are given. Um so it's not necessarily my like most anticipated, but it definitely is one of them because it is a evacuation designed by Vladimir Sushi. He is one of my most top designers. I always will look for games by him because every game he does is very different, offers unique uh, mechanisms, and uh, always, always enjoy learning his new games. So... This, of course, would be on my must-grab list from Spiel. Um, so, yes. <laughs> uh, Camelist says, hey, this is my most anticipated for Essen. The board looks great and the rules seem good to read. Well, that's great to hear. I haven't actually looked into the rules at all, um, but... You know, I it doesn't matter so much to me. It I will play it probably at BGG Con because I it is one of my most anticipated. Um, but yeah, it's a sushi game. Of course, I gotta play it. Of course. Um, so next on the list, it actually was on my list for Gen Con twenty three as well. Lost Ruins of Arnak, the Missing Expedition. This is the new expansion which plays for two players. It gives you two new leaders. There's a there's a solo mode and two player campaign mode. Uh, so it's cooperative. It just looks amazing. We got the rundown at Gen Con. We haven't yet dived into it because I I just there's been so many games that we've been playing here, but it is. Definitely on my short list of games to get played because I love Lost Ruins of Arnak and I love this expansion. So if you don't already have it and you also love the base game, uh, this would be a must grab as well. See, it even has a million thumbs because people are very excited for it. Um, so next on the list would be Nucleum. Michael and I recently played this on stream. So if you're looking for a video to teach you all the rules... Uh, I, <laughs> Michael has gone through all the rules for you in a video, but we also did a playthrough as well. So it is a big game. There, uh, there are a lot of rules. This is 
definitely not one that you're just going to sit down and play la 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 but it you have to kind of like get in the mood for it because it is a lot going on in this game it is really fun uh lots of great accent action selection uh little bite-sized turns that you're doing that build up into a big like network of like it's not, it's not pick up and deliver, but you're you're delivering resources to power the cities. So you're trying to make your network happen and connect your groups. Uh, so it's cool. It's a cool, cool game. I'm sure a lot of people will be running to get that one during Spiel. Uh, next one is Kutna Hora, which honestly, the box cover is horrible. I really don't like the box cover. And maybe I'm being a little harsh, but uh, it's not in my opinion it's not selling any games now if you got the overview as we did at gen con it's like whoa this game's amazing it looks really cool really well done it is a solid euro game that is that will probably blow me away this will i will be surprised if it doesn't make like my top 25 games of the year once i play it so Hopefully we get that played uh, at BGG Con or some other time in the near future because I anticipate this being a very, very good game. Uh, it, 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 it automatically has some really cool mechanisms to like uh, like market manipulation. So it what, what it's doing is super cool. And so it seems different. And yeah, if you like heavier euros, I think this will be one to check out for sure. Um, Obviously, the new expansion for Ark Nova. This is one that's probably end up going to be, I'm going to have to probably wait for the capstone release in the U.S. So this might not actually hit, you know, my shelves until next year, which is fine. I'm fine waiting for a, an English copy just to, to go with my English copy of the game as well. Because um, there's a lot of text on the Ark Nova cards. Uh, but it obviously is a must have for when you know i can get it because uh, i love arc nova like everybody else and um it's it'd be cool to add the the water aquatic animals to it um so yeah uh i have played three ring circus uh had i not played it it would definitely have been on my must haves list because I am super drawn to the art style. I'm super drawn to the theme. It's like so fun and it's fresh and there's a lot of really cool card play in this game. You know, having played it, I I don't, I'm not sure. It, it, it would have been on the interested list. So uh, having played it now, it's like, okay, I think it's a good game and I'll play it again happily, but it's probably just... You know, it, it didn't live up to my own hype that I had for it. So just, you know, check it out. See if it's for you. It, I mean, it's pretty good. And um, it's definitely worth playing. Uh, obviously, Planta Nubo is high on my list. It's very, very high on my must-haves list. Because uh, we got the Uva Rosenberg name on there. Uh, there's polyominoes going on in this one. It just looks really nice. Uh I, yeah. So this, this one uh, just looks like a game I will enjoy. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly what you're doing, but action drafting, contracts, economic, environmental, I think that could all be great. I mean, I just love polyominoes anyway, so a lot of these games, uh, you know, will be because of the mechanics or because of the designers. So this one, because of both of those things. World Wonders, because the theme is so great, you get these chonky bits. We actually played this on stream last night. I've now played it twice. Um, it, it Had I not played it, it would be on my list, right? This this game, the theme, everything like lines up really great. Uh, now, for me, after playing it a few times, it probably wouldn't be on my must-haves list. It would probably be on my interested-in list, where it's worth playing. There's a good game here. Um, I... It doesn't leave me feeling great at times, so it's not like a a pleasing game in my mind because it's just I feel like I want to do more than I'm doing, and then by the end of it, I'm like, did I get anything done? I <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those weird feelings for me. So um, I would just try this game, see if it's for you, and then you know you'll decide if you like it at that time. So. 
Michael says, she doesn't like it when I steal her tiles. This is true. Very rude. Very rude. Michael says he enjoyed World Wonders. Um, so, yeah. Well, it's a five-player game, and I need more. It seems seemed good after watching you play, so I hope it gets it to get it at Essen. Awesome. Let me know how you like it, because I'm curious. I, I think a lot of people will like it, for sure. Um, and I, I, I do like it. It's just, would it be a must have after playing it? Maybe not. It's definitely on the interested side though. The next on my must have would be Barcelona. This is another board and dice game that we played, I don't know, a month or two ago, something like that. And it is a gorgeous game. Uh, so it's... There's a lot of player interaction in this, which generally is not my favorite thing. It has a, a weird timing system with how the game is played out, too. Uh, so while it would be a must-have had I not played it, I also think this is one of those games that would fall in the interested-in category. So I think this game is actually going to end up being a keeper for me in the long run. So uh, it if you pick it up or if I picked it up, I wouldn't have been disappointed or anything. Uh, so it's there. It's, it's hard to say after one play, but I've now played it three times and you kind of get the swing of things. I like how the board like layout happens at the start of each game because that will give you a different feeling each game. Uh, the, the main deterrent for me is like it feels kind of like a race game, but it's not because there is like... There are points to be had. It's a very point salad -y kind of game. So if you like Feld titles, you're, you'll probably like this one. It gives, it gives, this is kind of Feldian in a way uh, because there's so many different like paths you can take, but you don't want to take every path and you want to try and get little points everywhere that you can, but you can't do it all. So um, yeah, Michael says the first scoring triggers way too early. I wish it had a different progression of time in the game. That being said, I don't think that there the game should go on much longer than it does. So I think there's a good timing for the game. I just wish it happened in a different kind of way. Um, so it's just the timing aspect of the game is a little weird and, and it kind of jumps out at you. So you just have to kind of plan for that, or you'll see after you play the first game, and then you'll you'll see if you like it. Um, next up is the remake of Shipyard. Uh, the, now, I don't necessarily need to go out and get this game because I have Shipyard, but I'm really excited that it is available for other people to now purchase because it was out of print. And, you know, harder to find. And I just want more people to be aware of it. From my understanding is they didn't change anything regarding the game. Uh, so I don't think it's going to like... If you didn't like Shipyard to begin with, then you're probably not going to like this and you're not going to need this. Uh, I don't need to upgrade my copy to this. So I wouldn't actually purchase this. However, I'm just happy it's there because I love Shipyard. I think it's a great game. Um, and, you know, having more people join that love would be great. So, uh, yeah, tons of rondelles. Um, Michael says, ooh, I haven't played this. Kamala says, Shipyard, I had this old game. I don't recall liking it that much. Gave it away. Well, I don't think this would change your mind. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I feel like Shipyard has a lot of love or doesn't have a lot of love. There are a ton, a ton of little tiny pieces that you kind of have to balance on these other little pieces. So it can be kind of fiddly, and I can see the deterrent for that from people. For me, I don't care. I just, I just like it. Um, I like building up my ships and trying to sail them away. Um, <laughs> yo, dog, I heard you like rondelles. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> obviously, I like them rondelles. So, yeah. It's, it's great. It's a great game. 
Uh, if I were going to spill, this would must be on my purchase list, the Underwater Cities Minis expansion, because why wouldn't I want more cards? Always want more cards. This is just like a no-brainer. Five euros for, you know, whatever, 12 cards or something? Yes. I want these cards. One day I'll find them. I don't care. <laughs> yes, I want these cards. I love Underwater Cities. More Underwater Cities cards. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, we haven't yet played it. Hopefully it's on the schedule for this weekend or in the very near future. But it is the expansion for Revive uh, called Call of the Abyss. I loved Revive last year. Michael just learned it. We just played it uh, just the other day so he could learn it so we could play this new expansion. Uh, so expect to see that on the stream in the very near future uh, because I'm very excited to check it out. Um, now, there's a lot going on in Revive as it, as it is. So I'm curious to see how these different modules and different mechanics will change the game for the better, for the worst. I'm not really sure, but it doesn't matter because I want it. So I got it. <laughs> and uh, totally love Revive. Um, it was really great to actually play it again uh, for a second time, just like a week ago. Um, so we will definitely be streaming this in the very near future. Great for, you know, anybody who loves Revive, I'm sure. Um, next up is the Fox Experiment. Um, mostly because I simply love foxes because look how cute. I mean, come on. Uh, I don't really know much about the game. Looks like dice rolling animals. Uh, could be good, might not be good, but the theme is awesome, and I definitely want to play it. Uh, then we got Kelte. Uh, this game, it would have been, like, probably my number one must-get game at Spiel had I not played it. Having played it, it would have gone down my list a little bit. Now, I've played it three times and it's grown on me a lot. My first play was brutal. It was a beat down brutal. It was a brutal game. Since then I've kind of learned from my mistakes. <laughs> and uh yeah. Uh Heroic Lug says, I love that co cover. I mean yeah the cover is amazing. It's fantastic. Uh but anyway it would be my number one pick had I not played it because of the designer Orlando Saw. He always has some really interesting ideas in his designs. And I, I love checking out um, Pythagoras' games in general just because they're always, you know, well thought out and well done. So this one was no exception. It's, it's really cool. I think people will be surprised by this one. I, I, I'm not sure it will have the, a great first response. But I think as people play it a few times, it'll grow on them. Uh, but it's a, it's a, it's cool. It's a cool game. It's different. It's very different. So I would definitely give it a shot if I were you. Um, and if you, you know, if you can. And uh, I think it's worth trying. It's good. It's weird. It's, it's brutal. But it's good. Um... Here we go. Am what? Amritsar? Amitra? I don't I can't. I, can't, I have no idea how to say this. I have no idea how to say this name. Um, Amritsar? I don't know. Whatever it is, I'm probably saying it wrong. However, uh, don't know anything about it. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. I looked at some pictures and it looks phenomenal. I mean, it just looks like a gorgeous gorgeous game so maybe it's a cool euro game it's a it's a mancala style game uh and you're trying to rebuild the temple i guess it's territory building as well i mean it's a game that i would definitely need to go look at because it looks so nice uh, i would probably want to get a demo of this one at spiel and see if it's a, if it's actually a must-have because to me, it looks great. 
And uh, I'm not really always that into territory building, but I'm curious about this Moncala style uh, mechanic. So, yeah. Next up is bamboo. Uh, it it again. This looks like a bigger game for Devere. So, um, action drafting, tile placement. I don't know. It looked really nice when I was looking at pictures, and I was like. Yeah, this looks like something I should play. <laughs> That's my only justification for that one. But it looked cool, so I want to play it. I can't help it. All right, more expansions, because why not? This would definitely be a must-have. I love Maracaibo. Whenever the heck Maracaibo came out, that was, like, my game of the year or near my top of the game of the year. I don't know. It's It's been a minute now, but super love Maracaibo. I still need to play the last expansion for Maracaibo, which is a cooperative game, I believe. So it's just, I need to get that played. And then I'll go ahead and get this one played. By the time it comes out in English, it, <laughs> right? By the time it comes out in English, I'll get the other one played. So I, I, I would like more Maracaibo in my life. So this is a great way of doing it. Uh, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Oh, Michael's helping me out with uh, the pronunciation of uh, John Guo, <laughs> because I get it wrong. Uh, we played this on stream, so if you're looking for a playthrough, rules teach, we got it all. Uh, make sure to check out our video for that. Um, I, I've loved the original John Guo, and uh, I love this one as well. It, they are different. They they have the same feeling as you're playing it, but there's a lot more going on in this one because there's a whole other river track and everything. They changed up a lot of the tiles and how the walls work a little bit. Um, they have new t uh, way of scoring extra points uh, for like fulfilling different building types and and almost like a contract type thing. So, but the, but the core of the game is playing these cards either for its action or for its permanent ability. And that's what's really, it's a simple idea and it's really great. So I, I've always loved that about this game. Uh, and they keep that of course. So this is a hundred percent worth checking out. Uh, love it. Love it so much. I still have my other one, my old edition. And now I have this new edition and then the question arises, which one do you keep? Right now, I keep both because I don't know. I have to play them both back to back and see what I think. <laughs> and maybe they're different enough to keep both. I don't know. But they are definitely different. Um, I might like the new one. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have My Island, which I actually have here. We're going to play during DanCon in a couple weeks. So... Uh, I'm very excited to check this out. I obviously love My my City. That's a great game. I've played through My City a few times. So very excited to try My Island. I think it's like tile placement. So yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't really look too much into it, but I know that there's a scenario, lot, like lots of different chapters of mini games, like very much like My City, but uh, different in terms of what you're doing. As far as I know, I, have, I haven't actually looked into it that much, but obviously this would be a must-have if you also enjoyed My City. Next up is Next Station Tokyo. Uh, this game is so hard to judge because my Next Station London is, like, one of the best games. Like, I, I love that game last year. It made, like, my top three or something of, of last year. I love it so much. Uh, Tokyo is its own beast of a game. It's a small box game, of course, but it's there's so many depths to this game that it's not exactly easy to just grasp. So if you're going to start with Next Station, Tokyo, or London, you got to choose London because it, it at least gets you the, the idea the, the core of the game down before you have to add in this extra layer of like the green ring and how the cards work and how do you move around the map. Uh, it's, it's a challenging game. I've been playing it on board game arena mostly. Uh, and I'm still like terrible at it. Like I'm not, 
I'm not anywhere at the level of Next Station London. I, I don't have the skills yet, but, you know, I still enjoy playing it. Would I choose it over Next Station London? Maybe just for a change, but generally I prefer the London game. So if you haven't played Next Station London, highly recommend it. I love it so much. And then you should check out Next Station Tokyo. Neotopia. We actually did a stream for this the other day. Um, and it's it's a pretty cool, like, had I not played it, it would be on my must-haves list, mostly because Orlando saw again. Uh, it's more of an abstract pattern game, so it's not exactly like a Euro-style game. It, there There is a hand management mechanic where you're, you have these hand of pattern cards, so you're trying to place these tokens in a very specific way, uh, and you're trying to, like, move up different tracks. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's a, it's more puzzly and uh, almost ab abstract in a way, but um, it's good. It's good. I Having played it now, I probably would put it on the interested side of things, uh, but it's a beautiful game. Lots of really nice components in there, uh, beautiful artwork and everything. So definitely worth checking out, especially if you like trying to puzzle out your victories. Uh, Art Society. This is a must-have. Had I not played it, it would be a must-have. After having played it, this is the absolute number one game that you need to go and get when you're at Spiel. This game is amazing. I love it so much. And, and you know what? It might not be for everybody. But it has everything that I personally love in a game. Uh, there, It's... It says auction sealed bid, but it's more of like you're selecting a card from your hand and then you're trying to get turn order. So I guess it's a sealed. It, it, it gives you an auction feeling, but you don't actually get to rebid. And if you didn't get what you wanted, um, this game is so good. I, I I just want to keep playing this game over and over again. It It's so simple. And yet it's so not simple because you, you want to get certain paintings to your wall, but you don't want them to touch if they have a theme in common, but you want them to touch if they have the same like frame style. And then there's the whole line of sight thing. What, how is the market doing? So there's always going to be a tile left over and that will boost the market rating for that color type. So you have to be careful on what gets like the most because that, Whatever is the highest on that scale will be worth the most points at the end. And so you're going to want to have a lot of those on your board at the end of the game. And so there's a lot of nice things that are happening in this game that don't really reveal themselves until you're playing it. And you're like, oh, that really works. That that I understand why I should bid low because then I get the final choice between two tiles. And then if I choose this one, that means the color I actually want will get boosted. And so there's a lot of subtleties in this game that really is a really nice game. And I, I would absolutely highly recommend it. Darwin's Journey. I feel like I've been talking about Darwin's Journey for like ever. <laughs> when the heck was this Kickstarter? I played it then. So it was many, I don't know, two, three, 2020, maybe. I don't even know. Whenever it was, I played it. I really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed it since. I guess it's finally getting a release this year and people are excited for it. I really enjoy it. It's worth checking out. It's a big euro -y game. So uh, I actually have the Kickstarter here, too. Um, I've had it for a while, so I anticipate that other people have had it for a while as well. Um, but it, I guess it's the first year it'll be at Essen, so they, they put it on the list. I feel like it's been out for a minute, though, so not much to say. Everybody, if you like Euro games, is probably going to want to play that. Ah, Kamala says, Darwin's Journey is one of my favorite games of the year. was very glad to get your Kickstarter. Great. Awesome. Jekyll versus Hyde. Oh, sorry. Jekyll and Hyde versus Scotland Yard. Now, a few years ago, they came out with Jekyll versus Hyde, which is a two-player trick-taking game, which I love. It showed up on Board Game Arena. Uh, super enjoyed it. Got a copy. Then I'm like, I need 
I, when I saw this listing, I'm like, oh my God, I need this game. So I contacted uh, Mandu for a possible review copy and they did send me one. So I'm very, very, very excited to to play this game because I always love like cooperative games. Uh, I like trick taking. So if it's anything like the other trick taking game, which is really smart and, uh, you know, it just works. The Jekyll and Hyde theme just works so well with this two player, um, like almost like a back and forth situation. So I'm curious to see how they incorporate that into a cooperative game. Uh, super love the theme. If I had to pick like, you know, a top five theme, this would probably make number one or two. Like I love the Jekyll and Hyde theme. I love it so much. I think it's like my favorite theme besides like, Egyptian, which I absolutely love as well. So it's like I it's like I love it. I just I can't help it. But and they make it look so good with the with the I think it's Vincent Dutre artwork and um yeah it's just I'm very excited for this game. Um here we have Dwarf Romantic. This is the two player version of Dwarf Romantic. Uh we we got to try the the bigger game back in April. We Michael and I both really enjoyed it. So now we have a copy that we're going to share with all of you sometime really soon on the stream. Uh really enjoyed this uh simple uh, starts off simple cooperative campaign game. Uh and um it's just tile placement, but it it's it's done in a great way. So it's it's a really nice game. So I'm I'm sure that this two player version will also have a a fun feeling and uh it's definitely a game I'm I'm interested in. Very romantic dwarf. <laughs> Kayla says, I like this game, but I think the first game was really just a one to two player game. Doesn't seem to play fun with six. Well, we actually played it with four people and it was just fine. I mean yeah, sure. It. I don't know what the difference is if I were to play two player original game versus two player of the two player game. Uh, maybe it will give you a similar experience. But yeah, we had fun playing with four. Let's get some more. All right. Expansion for Orleans. Now, I thought Orleans was pretty much dead in the water at this point, but they keep coming out with more stuff. And so it's it would be a must-have. However, I don't have the BGG geek up bits for it. So can I even play it? Probably not. I've seen a lot of forum posts about this. Uh, so if Beth can get the, the bits going, uh, I'm sure a lot they'll get a lot more sales for this expansion. Uh, you know, I like it would be a must have. However, it's not compatible with my game as we speak because I've upgraded all the pieces and I don't think I have. I mean, I had the uh, Kickstarter edition T Tasty Minstrel. So even if I still had the uh, the discs, they would be like the wooden discs. I don't think I even have those anymore. So um, I'm pretty sure I don't have the bits to play. So. Right now, it's, it's you know, it's fuzzy on whether or not I would have picked this up. But I'm very interested in it. I just need the, the geek up bits. <laughs> so hopefully Beth will get on that and they'll make it happen. Uh, this game looked really good. Zoo Tycoon, the board game. Uh, watch you, the zoo of your dreams come true. It's a huge game. It looks... Bigger than Arc Nova. Like, I was looking at pictures. I'm like, whoa, there's so much going on. It looks really cool, though. Like, I think I will really enjoy it. So I definitely want to try and learn more about this. It was a Kickstarter at one point, um, and it, you know, it was created, and now it's being released. So uh, it looked really cool. I haven't played the game Zoo Tycoon, but... I'm sure it's awesome. I'm sure it's a fun computer game. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to be on the lookout for Zoo Tycoon, the board game. 
at Gen Con, they released Redwood, which I haven't yet played, but I'm dying to play it. It is about line of sight as you take pictures. I mean, the theme is, like, amazing. It, you know, if it's not Jekyll and Hyde, it's photography, and it's Egyptian. Like, those, like, you get me more excited than, than having, like, these those themes. Uh, but this has a really cool mechanic where you're, like, placing, like, like, you're trying to shoot the picture, and you're going to see what you see, whatever is, like, on the board. And then it has a really cool spatial element to it. So I'm very I'm very curious to see what it actually plays like. But it seems really cool. It would definitely be on my, my must-grab at Spiel, just because it looks awesome. So uh, check it out. Um, our keys... I don't know if I said that right. I'll assume I said it wrong. Uh, this one, I believe, it looks... It looked more like a escape the room type game, but I could be wrong. I could be misremembering. But in any case, cool theme, amazing designers, cooperative adventure, exploration. I don't know. I just, again, with the theme, I really, really like it. And, yeah, it looked really cool. Check it. Footy Prince. All right. It's called Footprints, but I call it Footy Prince. <laughs> we actually played this on stream last night, and uh, we had a great time. I always look for Elif as a designer uh, because he is a port of games that they re recently formed Chili Fox as well. So they have got a couple different publishing avenues that they're working on. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a cool game. I mean, I like that it plays up to six players. I like that everybody has, you know, a different like deck of unique cards, uh, like different variety of cards, um, different player boards, things like that. So there's always something else to like, it's like a little bit different than what you did last game. Um, you're playing these cards to try and move through the terrains and then try and get to the end and, and score points. So lots of ways to score points. And it's just, it, it, it's a nice game. I would, I, I'm pleased by it and I'm happy we were able to stream it and play it early. I would check it out. I don't love the theme, but it's, it's solid enough where I'd say definitely go. Go, go look for it and try it. Archaeologic. Um, I mean, that's a sweet looking box. That is so cool. I had to give it a thumbs up because it looks so cool. Um, and then you're like looking at it. It says, be the first to find the right location of the buildings in the city. It's a deduction game. Puzzle game. Uh, it just looks so cool. I love deduction. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find the perfect deduction game. Uh, and, you know, it's it's hard. I love that name. Archaeologic. <laughs> the box made you interested, too. Yeah. I mean, it is a nice looking box. I'm telling you. Box covers, It's it, they sell. They sell games. If you have a bad box cover, you're not going to sell your game. Sorry. There are just too many games out there. You're not going to pick a bad looking box. I mean, you're going to have to go in to buying a game knowing you want the game before you see the cover. And then you'll buy it. <laughs> but it's like having a really nice cover, it sells games. And that's a nice cover. So I guess it's like Search for Planet X. I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. Maybe. But there's like these polyomino things. So that looks really cool. I don't, I don't really know what's going on in this one, but I love that it's like a polyomino thing going on. I don't know. It just, everything about this seems like something I would really like. Uh, so for me, this would be a, a must grab just to see. 
It doesn't look as complicated as Turing Machine. Turing Machine has a big setup and teardown aspect to it because you have to sort the cards. And then again, I don't really know because I have not played it. But anyway, it looks really, really cool. Next up is Fit to Print. I played this when it was on Kickstarter. Super loved it. If you are a fan of Galaxy Trucker, you know, the speed and tile grab of Galaxy Trucker, I think you'll really enjoy Fit to Print. Fit to Print has a like a second layer of this uh, where you're grabbing the tiles, but you don't place them right away. You grab them, and then when you're done grabbing them, then you have to place them. So you're kind of planning ahead how you might want to lay out your 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 paper because it's a newspaper layout and it's tricky because you don't want any leftover pieces because those are negative points, but you also can't have same things touching each other on the board. So you have to kind of look out for that. Uh, there's a lot of great things to love about this game, including the adorable artwork art style of this game is amazing. I super love it. Um, this is a great game and I would highly, highly recommend checking it out, especially if you like Galaxy Trucker, which I also love Galaxy Trucker. Um, this one is a faster game. Look, it says 15 to 30 minutes. I don't I don't see it being a 15 minute game, but I guess if everybody knows exactly what they're doing, you can play through it really fast. But if you're playing with like a bunch of people, it plays up to six. So if you're playing with six people, you're not going to play it in 30 minutes either. It's going to be more like an hour just because keeping everybody going and it's, it's, it's a process, right? Uh, but it's worth, worth it, worth playing for sure. Uh, a must have would be Roman a day. This little gem of a game is totally going to get overlooked by a lot of people. I think I don't want it to get overlooked. Because I love it. And I think a lot of people would love it if they gave it the time of day. Um, this is a I split you choose game where you have to split up the different tiles that you have in front of you. And the one with fewer tiles also gets this little gem. You have to give up a gem. And the gems are its own sort of set collection thing. So you don't really want to give up gems. But maybe if you incentivize other people to take that one, then you get the tiles that you want with the buildings that you want on them. So it's a it's very simple. Four rounds. It's super fast. Um, I split, you choose. And then you build up your little region of, of you know, tiles and city. It's like this little, the little buildings. Uh, it's, base, it's streamlined and it's quick. It's easy to understand. There's a lot of things to love about this game. It would be a must grab. It should be a must grab for many people. And if you don't know about it, or if people don't know about it, then they should. Roman a Day is such a generic title that I think it will get overlooked. Unfortunately, it's a it's not a small box game, but it's a smaller box game. It's not a normal like you know glass road type box, but it's it's more of a code names type box. And so you're trying. You get it's 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 not big it will get overlooked and unfortunately because i think it's a great game play it freelancers it's gotten a lot of love from a lot of different reviewers out there uh totally enjoyable game if you enjoy the other adventure book games that plaid hat does you know like um if you played familiar tales or if you've played like um, Forgotten Waters. It kind of has the same vibe as that, except in this game, there's a lot of like funny comments and like weird, like like you're trying to collect these different titles for yourself. Uh, so it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a fun, uh, you'll be laughing sort of game where it's a little bit more on like, I would say an RPG side of things because you're kind of getting into character you're choosing things your character might do uh but there are mechanics in the game where you place your piece on the and, and activate a space uh so it i think it works really well obviously you need three to seven people 
So it's, it's not great with two players, though there are two player rules, or you could play two characters each, which would be good too. Um, it's nice. It's a good game. We, we, we've had a lot of fun with it. We streamed a full game of it and, uh, that was great. So definitely recommend checking out freelancers, a crossword game. Another expansion this time for Boon Lake. Uh, I love Boon Lake. When Boon Lake came out, it was my game of the year. Probably ill-deserved. Probably should have been Nid of Valir that year. However, uh, Boon Lake, great game. Super love it. I'm excited to see an expansion for it. Unfortunately, Boon Lake didn't like... People didn't love Boon Lake as much as I was hoping they would. I definitely like it more than most people. Uh, but it, it certainly makes the game hard to get played. I have not... I've only played it... I don't know, three times or so. Um, but I really like it. I'm I'm excited to see what the expansion adds. Um, it's a nice game. It's a nice game. So if you're into Boon Lake, expansion. How about that? We've got the Cathedral of Orleans. This is a cooperative Orleans game. It's just in the universe of Orleans. I actually don't think it has anything to do with the the Orleans, the base game. I think it's its own standalone game with the theme of Orleans and some mechanics that line up with Orleans. Uh, and this time you're trying to build the Cathedral of Orleans. I, it sounds great. I don't know why it's not getting more thumbs, but... I 100% would pick this up if I were going to spiel. I want it to be wonderful. I want it to be so good. You know? You know what I mean? Okay, now we have Beacon Patrol. Uh, this is such a charming, 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 charming game. Uh, I love the little artwork style of this game. Uh, Michael and I have played it just one time so far, but we, we intend to stream it in the very near future. Um, so, yeah, it is it is a cooperative tile placement game. Think Carcassonne. However, you're, you have a boat and you're moving around the map in water spaces. So if you add a tile that's half water and half land, you're not going to go you know, 50% of the way, you're going to have to follow the water path to go to your next tile destination. So it's a, it's a lot more like confining, but each turn you're going to get three movement with your boat. And then you get to play up to three tiles that you have in front of you. So, and there's one chance to swap a tile with one of your, your partners. So, you know, you're trying to plan out the best way to play these tiles all while like circling the uh, the lighthouses or the red icons on the map because that's what will give you points at the end of the game. So it's it's a it's a thoughtful game. I mean, you really have to consider what you're doing and uh it's really fun. I we had a great time playing this one. It might make my top of the month next month or it might be very close. So we'll find out when we do our top 10 games of September in the very near future. <laughs> Next up is Pan Graham City from Korea Board Games. Uh, it's an Uwe Rosenberg title. It looks awesome. <laughs> it doesn't look just like all of his other polyamino tiles. It has really weird shapes, but you are trying to fill up a board. So it is kind of similar. Actually, it's very similar to his other games. However, I don't care. I want it. I want to play it. I want to love it. I wish it were getting more thumbs. I should give it a thumb. But yeah, you're trying to cover your grid with weird pieces. And it's puzzly. It's awesome. I'm sure I would like it a lot. <laughs> the next up is... M-L-E-M, -E Space Agency. I mean, this game was designed for Scott Farrier because cats in space. What else do you want from a game? But the real reason this is on my must-have list is because 
It's Rebel Studio. I always want to play their games. They have top quality games, but it is also paired with Reiner Knizia, and I always want to try his games too. So his games can be hit or miss, but generally I enjoy what, you know, he's doing in his games. And so this one is a dice rolling game. I believe there's like push your luck and stuff. So, you know, I, I'm i sure it is a game I would quite enjoy. Um, but who wouldn't like Cats in Space, right? Right? All right, Challengers Beach Cup. I have been playing the heck out of Challengers on Board Game Arena. Like, the heck out of it. I, I love Challengers. I love it so much. So, we had the pleasure of playing Challengers uh, 2 or Beach Cup and now. At the time, it was Challengers 2. Uh, and we did a preview for it. Uh, we love it. Uh, Challengers has always been, like, super fun for us. So, uh, we, we love more challenges in in this edition you get player powers uh all of the decks of cards are a little bit more challenging like they they offer a little bit more depth if you will uh so if you're familiar with challengers you can add in these new cards to give you a little bit more consideration as you play uh super loved it uh you could play up to what uh 16 people you can have a dual tournament going on where one table plays each other you'll have a winner of each table and then they'll duel for the, the epic title uh so there's that kind of mode that we we were able to to do at bgg con we had a great time uh 100 would pick this up because challengers beach cup is awesome steph approved love it so much Well, it says, we'll be interested if they get some license set for it. And Michael's like, licenses are hard. Yeah, it's true. Like the similar decks are they're getting licensing for that. That's true. It's possible if it's if it's out of the country, it might be easier to get licenses, but I'm not exactly sure if that's true or not. All right. Next up is a new expansion for Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Oh my god. There's Ted is still making expansions for Castle of Mad King Ludwig. I am in. I love this game so much. And it's a game I would never turn down because I love it. This is like a 9 out of 10 for me or something. Like I love, I don't get to play this game enough. And uh if there's a new expansion. Maybe that will give us a reason to bring it to the table more often. Uh, but totally, totally excited for it. Um, yep. I love it. I love it much. Maybe I'll get... I, ha I have to look into getting like that really nice edition of Castle of Mac and Ludwig. Because, uh, yeah. I don't need it. I just want it. You know what I mean? <laughs> The amount that I play it, though, is just, uh, it's probably not worth it. All right. I recently moved this one from my interested in to my must-haves, mostly because it's from Hall Games. And they're pretty solid Euro. It's a, a bunch of solid Euro gamers over there at Hall Games. And, uh, you know, this designer has made a ton of great games that I enjoy. I think, like, Hadara. Um, what was, what was those other games? There were there were several, all from like Hall, that I was like, oh yeah, I like that game. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Crown of Amara. Livingstone was solid. I haven't played Yeti, but Hadara. You know, we all love Hadara. So in any case, the Zin um, theme is pretty cool. I was looking at pictures of it. It looked really cool. Uh, I don't know. This would probably be... I like that it's an English edition, too. So, I would I would pick it up if I were going to Spiel. Because I like to play all the games. <laughs> oh, a Vladimir Suchi game for one to two players where you're colonizing planets, researching technologies, and you are dominate the entire planetary system. Sounds great. Let's go. Alderbaran duel. 
Aldebaran. I don't know. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I would get it because I play two-player games a lot, and, you know, it's a Vladimir Suchi game, so... Uh, so, yeah. There is not much information about this new game, Carvey. But if it's the new Hansam Gluck game, I'm sad because I didn't get to play it uh, in April when I probably had the chance to. Um, but, yeah, it's... There's not much about this game, however... All I need to know is Hans and Gluck because they make super solid games that I really enjoy. Uh, so I always want to know what they're doing next. It doesn't even matter if it's good. I will find out once I buy it and play it. And then I'm sure it's super solid. No matter what. Even if it's not my type of game, I'm sure it's a super solid game that they, they put in the work over at Hans and Gluck. And they do great jobs. They do a great job. So... Uh, definitely, it would be high on my anticipated list. Come sail away would be my, if, if I were going to Spiel, this would be the second game I go and grab. First would be Art Society. Come sail away would be second. It has seen a lot of plays around here because it is awesome. It is awesome. Uh, I was given a review copy of it and my game group absolutely loves it. Uh, Michael and I have loved it. It's just, it's a great fillery type game where you are dropping meeples around your ship to try and please them, get them into their, their, into their cabins and into the recreation rooms that they want to be enjoying. Uh, so you're just, it's a very simple card drafting game and meeple placement game. It's really well done and super solid. I'm sad it only has 62 likes because it is it is worth more likes than that. So check it. Sagrada Artisans. I played through um I played through this game in prototype and development phases, so we gave a lot of feedback. Haven't actually played through the campaign since it's been released, but I have it on my shelf. Waiting to get played. I just love coloring and things. <laughs> I I really enjoy the progression of Sagrada Artisans because you get to, it's Sagrada, but things are happening and you get to fill in your board. It's like a whole bunch of Sagrada games. So if you love Sagrada, this would be a must have. I mean, you are going to get so many cool plays of Sagrada uh, with this, with this Sagrada Artisans box. Runa Rush, I actually have, and I need to get it played, but it seems so good. So we got to spend a lot of time with the designer um, during Gen Con, and he told us about his games and all, all of his games in the past and coming out. But more importantly, a lot about Lunar Rush, which is a well-developed, uh, like, Euro-type economic game. Uh, it is really cool because you're trying to upgrade your actions, and uh, there's different like things you're trying to do, but you're trying to basically buy low, sell high, if you will. Um, it, I'm very excited to play this. So one day in the near future, Luna Rush will be hitting our table and coming to a stream near you on my table. <laughs> Bree says, I have played Luna Rush. It's really interesting. Well, there you go. Hi, Bree. Welcome in. Uh, yeah, so it would be. I I want. I don't want it to be a sleeper hit for people because I I think the, the game is really there, and I and I think a lot of people are gonna like this one. My very limited knowledge of this this game, but I I really I have strong feelings about it. Um, like a law. Sunrise Lane from Horrible Guild and Reiner Kaditzia. It's a redo of Rondo, I think. I haven't played Rondo. 
And I don't know how much they change from the redo. So maybe they changed a whole bunch. I have no idea. But looking at it, looking at comments of it, people are very excited by it. And it looks like a really cool city building game. Obviously, beautiful. Looks really pretty. So I definitely want to play it. I saw only glimpses of it at Gen Con. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely on my radar. Maybe I'll get to play that one at BG Con. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, if I were going to spiel, obviously the must-have uh, promo deck for board games 2023. Similo board game. I have the Similo board games for 2022. I love it. I want to mix them all together and have an amazing Similo board game deck. I love it so much. If I were playing Similo, this would be the deck I would play. This is the board game one. Uh, I hate that it's like only a promo or whatever. It's it's only like available the once. So I'm asking a friend to pick it up for me. Hopefully, hopefully I get a copy. That's my that's this is like the one game like I can't get outside of Spiel. This is like the game that you just can't get. So if you're going to Spiel, obviously pick up a copy because you won't be able to get it after the fact. Uh, Romy Romy, super delightful card game. It makes you feel at home. It's like it's like almost like a childhood memory type of game. Like you 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 feel good when you're playing this game. It has a lot of mechanics like. If you grew up playing card games, it has a lot of things that you're familiar with. It's very easy card game. It, it works well as a filler. Uh, I just, I really, really like this one. And um, it's a definite keeper for me. I think they did a great job. I think a lot of casual pe gamers will really like it. Uh, a lot of family gamers will like this as well because it's easy to get and... It's a small box game. It's just all around really nice. I really like it. If you're looking for like easy to play card games, this is the king of it, I would say. It's like, it's really nice. Um, Oh, I still have nine more for my must-have list. <laughs> Almost Innocent just showed up here the other day, so I'm very excited to get it played. It's a cooperative deduction game. Other than that, I don't know much about it, but I'm... It looks really cool. You know, I again, I've been looking for a really good deduction game that I want to play. And, you know, if I can find an easy to set up, easy to play, interesting de deduction elements to it, then I definitely want to find that game that, that fits for, for my style. And you know what? This could be it. Very cool. Looks really cool. Uh, go on. Uh, more from Sashi and Sashi is Newsboys. Michael and I played this the other day. It would be a must have if I were going and hadn't played it. Having played it now, it's, it's, I feel like we might have been there, done that with these rolling rights, but, you know, I still had a lot of fun with it. I would probably would have put it in the interested in category versus the must have category, but I know how hard it is to get uh, Sash, Sashi and Sashi games in general, so. Uh, I probably still would have bought it at Essen anyway. Um, and so it's, it's a nice game. It's, I like it. And I'm, I'm going to show it on stream in the near future. Next up is the Lord of the Rings Similo. I actually don't have any of the Similo decks at all, except for the board game one. I've been wanting to get them, but I just haven't. Uh, I, I never see them on virtual flea markets. Otherwise, I would have picked them up by now. But Lord of the Rings Similo, that would be a must-have for me. Like, I super love the theme. I love Lord of the Rings themed. This would be, like, top five themes. This would be one of them. Uh, so I'm very excited by... This deck of cards. Maybe I'll have another similar deck. So, sounds great. I want it. <laughs> Mind Space is a new all play title. 
Uh, I mean, just read that line. Fill your brain with colorful emotions to achieve serenity. Uh, It's a dice game, and you're filling in a grid with polyomino shapes. I mean, it feels like it's going to be like the other roll and write fill in with polyomino shaped games. And maybe it is, maybe it is not. But either way, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it because I like that kind of game. So I don't know how different it will feel, but it's worth checking out. And it's a small, tiny box. Oh, the rich and the good. Uh, Hob and Gut. As we played this. Um, wait, I don't know. We played... I don't know if it was last year or two years ago. We, we visited some friends and we got to play the Hob and Gut game. And it blew me away. I super, super love that game. So when, it, when I heard they were getting a reprint, I was all about it. I was so excited uh, for this reprint. It's a great game. I kind of wish they like updated the art a little bit because it's kind of drab. Uh, I wish they'd chosen a different theme. Uh, they they could have done so much with this reprint to make it more attractive. Uh, but in any case, it won't take away from the fact that I absolutely love the game. Uh, so we'll be playing that in the near future because uh, reasons. Uh, and uh, super love it. Oh, you know what? Maybe we'll play that one Dan, during DanCon because... We need three people to play this game. It's a weird economic system because you're sharing cards with people. And so you might want to like really pay attention to the cards on this side because you don't want Michael to take it. But if you wait too long, Dan's going to play this card over here. So it's like a what do you play next kind of thing because they're going to play it if you don't. So you need to take all the leg up you can get and it, it works really well. You want Michael to take it, but you're Michael. Of course you want Michael to take it. <laughs> this game is so much fun. Uh, I, I I think it will be hit or miss with people in general just because I don't think people kind of like the economic games as much. But if you do, definitely recommend it. A no P. Fiction is another small box all play game. Uh, it's like... Wordle with a traitor because the librarian is trying to get you to not guess the word and uh, all the other players are trying to guess the actual word. So it's 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 a five letter word that you're trying to guess and there's going to be clues kind of like mastermind where you're going to know, you know, it's in the word or not in the word or if it's in the word but in the wrong space. Except the librarian's lying about one of the things that you're asking about. So you kind of have to puzzle it together to figure out what they're lying about. Uh, it's it's really well done. And I, I'm ha- happy to add that one to my collection recently. And uh, worth looking into, for sure. The same game. This is a new Wolfgang Warsh game. Uh, communication Cooperative Deduction. Um... So it says, discuss how completely different objects might share the same something in common. Uh, I like Wolfgang uh, Varsh's ideas and his games in general, so I'm just curious uh, about this one. Definitely interested in giving it a go. It's three to six players, so that's a little bit of a turnoff. However, it doesn't matter. I would still, I would still want to pick it up for sure um, because I think I'll like it. Uh, Number nine, expansion. I was a bit surprised to see this. Uh, (laughs) My number nine copy already has two copies in it. So this this expansion includes two new, like, player abilities. So there's tiles for two two more players. So you can play up to six players. And then there's a whole bunch of other, um, like, modules you can include. So it would be a must-have. I would have to get two copies of it, though, because I have two copies of number nine. So, details. Michael's like, pass. He doesn't like the the abstractness of number nine. But I love it. I think it's a great game. Barrel Dice. It only has ten legs. I had to give it a leg because it needs some more love. Barrel Dice is a remake of um, Polterfass, which is a fantastic game. 
that everybody should play because it's just fun. It's a fun dice game. It's they're not really dice. They're barrels. So they're little barrels and they have either one number on one side or one number on the other side. And you're trying to roll them. Obviously, they're not going to all stand up for you or if they do, you're you're a wizard or something cuz they're not. <laughs> but you get you're trying to like push your luck. It's a push your luck game. It's just so much fun. Uh I I'm happy that they have you know, this remake of it. If you can't find it at the Zoc booth, then you can find it at the Play T booth, which worth it. So much fun. That brings me to the end of my list of the must haves. Oh my God. There's so many games, guys. That was only 59 of them. Uh, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot more to talk about because the it's only the cream of the crop. This is only like my must haves. Uh, so hopefully you like what you saw. Uh, I, there's a lot of, a lot of cool games to be excited by. Uh, so if you're excited for those as well, let me know. And if you get to play them, definitely let me know. And if it's worth my time, because I like to play all the games, but only if they're great, right? Well, it's hard to know until you play them. That's why, that's why I play them all. So I can judge if I really love them. Uh, but I will have a second video, part two, of all of the games I'm interested in. That's coming up right now. And that's about another 150 games. So we're going to go through that one like super zippy because that's a lot of games. <laughs> it's only so much time, right? Uh, so if you're heading to Spiel, hopefully you enjoy this video. Uh, and you'll catch my next video coming up. Uh, and if you're... Available ever on Twitch. We I stream with Michael. We stream three games every Monday. No, not Monday. Wednesday and Sunday. And we also have Game Gillies on Mondays, which is what I was thinking about. But yeah, we like to stream all the games. All the games. <laughs> I heard Michael from upstairs. All the games. <laughs> and so for those on Twitch, I will be right back with my continuation of part two. 